What's up, guitar nerds? This is Steve Sterlacci, and today we're going to be talking about something that I knew nothing about until a short time period ago. What I'm talking about today is the ABR1 and Nashville style bridges that you'll see on a lot of guitars. And I know what you're thinking, Steve. That's a nice last ball. And you might be wondering why I modified this guitar to have an ABR1 instead of the Nashville Tunematic Bridge. I know it was on your mind. I knew you were thinking it. I could feel it through the computer. I know that's exactly what you were thinking. Why would you do that? And the answer is quite simple. But first, let's take a look at the history of the ABR1. Even if you're just a casual music listener or a casual musician that doesn't spend a lot of time fascinating or studying gear, unlike myself, you'll notice that there are guitars that have this and this. Two pieces, a tailpiece and a bridge. Most guitar brands use this from Les Pauls, SGs, 345s, 55s, and 35s, uh, and 339s. And pretty much the guitars that don't have string through bodies, which means that the strings come out the other end, are gonna have this type of setup. There are typically two main players in this area, one being the ABR1 that we're gonna be talking about today, and the other is Nashville style. Both of these bridges are considered to be tunomatic style bridges. And what is their main function? Their main function is to make sure or at least try to get your guitar to play as close to perfectly intonated as it possibly can. You have individual slots here in its uh, simplest form. It's a bar with six saddles on it that you put your strings over and you can move these little notches up and down to try to get your guitar to play perfectly in tune. This is also known as your intonation, which is a very important part of playing a guitar, especially if you're gonna be trying to play professionally. You need to have your intonation set on your instrument if you want it to be playing at a professional level. If you're somebody that plays and all of a sudden when you're up here, it's not in tune, get your intonation checked. So when did this mysterious piece of uh, metal come to be? Well, we have to go all the way back to 1953, when Mr. Ted McCarty first developed and implemented the original Tunematic onto the Gibson Super 400. This technology immediately found its way into the Les Paul Custom in 1954, and it became a standard feature for future guitars even to this day. Prior to this time, guitars typically had a compensated one-piece rosewood bridge with ebony saddles. Now picture having a piece of wood down here, how annoying that would be to manufacture consistently make and to just maintain. After a while, I feel like the strings would wind up cutting through that. It would be a pain in the butt. Oh, and if Ted McCarty sounds familiar to you, you would have heard the McCarty as a model number for Paul Reed Smith guitars. And a little fun fact about Mr. McCarty is that he was actually hired by Paul Reed Smith as a consultant when he first started his company in the early 90s. So I think it was around 1994 that they hooked up and Paul Reed Smith actually named their Les Paul style guitar after Mr. McCarty. So it is totally safe to say that Ted McCarty had a lot of influence on all of the guitars of today. Not only did he have a patent on this bridge, he also had patents on, hold on, I gotta, I have to look this up because I forgot. Oh, okay. McCarty was also responsible for the development of the Tunematic bridge system, which we are talking about. He's also responsible for the humbucking pickup, the Explorer, the Flying V, the Modern, the SG, the Firebird. And the coolest part about all of this is that very much like Mr. Leo Fender, Ted McCarty did not even play guitar. So he just literally is responsible for all of the greatness that is guitar today, and he didn't even play. Pretty interesting cat. So back to the main topic as far as the ABR versus the Nashville style. What is the difference between the two? The ABR1, obviously, like we just talked about, was introduced back in the 50s. And that was like the standard for a long time until Gibson moved. Guess where? Nashville. That's why it's called the Nashville Tunematic. And the Nashville Tunematic is a little bit of a wider bar here so that you can get the intonation a little bit closer to perfect and there's also no retaining wire. On the older original ABR1s, there is a retaining wire that goes in between the adjustment screws and if they're not set properly, or not set properly, just over time they loosen up and they wiggle and they rattle and it drives a lot of players, including myself, insane when you have an ABR1 that has a wire rattling around. It's very annoying. Actually, I think I have one of those too. Hold on. Aha, I found one. So this is a D'Angelico, and this is an example of a ABR1 that has a rattling um, wire on it. So when you play this guitar, hope that comes out on the microphone. Can you hear that? 
enough of this. So on that, you get that rattling ABR1 sound, whereas you have a guitar like this, this is my Firefly 338, that has a much wider, newer Nashville style. Look how much bigger this is. That's a big old fat piece of metal right there. And this has no sound or rattling at all. This thing is rock solid and doesn't make any noise that it doesn't need to make. I didn't think I was gonna need a guitar tech for this video, but okay, next. All right, so aside from size, what are the other differences here? When you take a look at these, how they mount into the body is the real game-changing difference in my opinion here. So what I have here is an uninstalled Nashville style, and you'll have these pieces mounted into the guitar. So basically, this piece is hammered into the body of the guitar, and then you get your, your bridge post here, and this screws in via either a thumb wheel here, or you can use a screwdriver on top. A lot of the imports are usually a flathead screwdriver on top, like the Firefly that you just saw. And then your bridge just literally rests on top of it like this. And it sits like that in your guitar. So the reason that I prefer the ABR-1 over this is that the ABR-1 is just a huge piece of metal that's stuck into your body. And if you take a close look at my ES-345, this is an original ABR-1 where all you see is that screw piece popping up, that threaded dowel sticking out of the body. And from there, you just screw in a thumb wheel that acts as a shelf. So the thumb wheel just holds the bridge in place. So all you really have is bridge and stud. That's it, there's less metal, and that piece of metal also goes directly into the wood, which I think contributes to a better resonance and a better vibrating piece of wood. It's a more cohesive feel, in my opinion. There's like a little bit of a springy and sponginess that you get with the ABR-1 that you just do not get with the Nashville style. Where'd I put my last ball? So with the Nashville, you have three totally separate pieces that one mounts into the guitar, one screws into that mount, and then one rests on top, whereas the ABR-1 is one piece of metal, and then it just holds the bridge in place. So I'm a big fan of the ABR style. And now today, you have a lot more options. So this guitar actually, and this is why I modified this guitar, this came with a Nashville style bridge. And I used to have this, okay, quick side story. I used to have a Les Paul Classic that I sold to my buddy Martin, which I totally regret because it was one of the best guitars ever. And at that time I didn't realize it was because it had the ABR one, just like my ES345 does. And when I got my ES345, I played it and I was like, holy crap, that's the feel that I've been missing since I sold my Les Paul Classic. So I went on the internet, I found a company called Corsa Faber, and they make conversions for Nashville style studs to be converted into ABR uh, and ABR1. And this is not a sponsored video, I paid for these, and I wanted to just make a video to show what it can do. And basically it comes with a kit that removes this piece, from your guitar, you just screw a piece in and it removes that real easy. And then you tap in the entire stud. So the whole stud from here to inside the body is all one piece and you basically hammer that into the body of the guitar. It creates a better connection with the body and it only has the one dowel sticking up for you to put the thumb wheel on. And also he has an updated, more modern form of the ABR-1 that is a little bit wider so you're not gonna get maxed out with your intonation like on the vintage style ones. The more vintage style ones were more narrow so you weren't able to adjust these, um, these saddles to get the intonation perfect. And also side note, the actual correct way to have the screws is pointing upward. The reason for that is that when these first came out, the screws would have been, if they were underneath here, if the screws were facing down towards the, um, towards the bottom of the guitar, the break angle of the string would have been over the screw so you wouldn't be able to adjust your intonation, which is why the vintage correct way of doing this is having the screws on the top facing the neck of the guitar. Fun fact. So that is why I switched this one over to be an ABR-1. And I have to say, honestly, it was a crazy improvement in tone, feel, and sustain with a guitar that I already loved. This was already one of my favorite guitars that I've ever even seen in my entire life. I love this guitar to death, and I probably will keep this guitar for the rest of my life. So modifying it was a pretty big deal to me. And after putting in this ABR1 style bridge, I absolutely feel a difference in sustain, feel, sp springiness, and just overall made the guitar a better sounding guitar. 
Let me know in the comments if you guys have ever used an ABR1 versus a Nashville style, whether you like it or dislike it, which do you like better? And let me know if you think that I'm completely crazy because this is definitely one of those subjects that can get hairy on whether or not you feel the difference, but I do. And if you do, let me know. If you don't, I'm sure you will let me know. See you in the next one.